This is actually a really cool thing. Now, um, you know, it solves a problem, I think, that has existed for a while. Now, you notice that um, it may seem like my spreadsheet is sort of zoomed out, and I'm going to leave it that way to drive a point home here. Um, I'm in the Developer tab, and I'm going to just present one of the problems that we often see. Now, um, I'm going to insert a radio button. I'm just going to put one right here. As you see, I'm doing here. I'm just going to make another one right under it, just because I want to. Okay, so we have these two uh, radio buttons, also known as option buttons. Um, and if I go over here and I go to Format Control, I can assign it to a place on the um, spreadsheet such that when I click them, it's going to change, uh, you know, it's going to change this to uh, reflect which one I've clicked on. Now, one of the problems that we have here is that you can't really do a whole lot of um, editing in here. You can't really um, increase the font. Uh, you can't really increase that little bubble. It doesn't really matter how big you make this. And for a long time, we've, we've accepted this. And truth is, I, my, my fix here doesn't entirely fix it, but it does create a cool workaround. So that's really our problem, and it's a problem that I have with these option buttons in general, is that they're just so small, I can't change the font. If I wanted to make this bigger, I could zoom in. Or um, another way is I could uh, take away this text. I could add my own label here, but that doesn't solve the problem of this little, um, small little uh, um, circular punch. I don't know what you would call it, the radio button, the option it's still going to be small. So I wanted to figure out a way around that, and I'm going to show you a way around that that I have here. And it actually requires a very, very, very tiny amount of VBA code. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three of these, and I'm just going to change the name just to make them this easier so it's just like one, two, three. So that'll be a one. And we'll make this a two. You know, it's always a pain to <laughs> edit these as well. Um, and we'll make this a three. Okay, and so I've already linked it over. Um, you see, if I right-click this and I click Format Control, so um, we've connected. We've connected these buttons. We see the Format Control dialog box. Um, so I've connected all of them to F2. I've also named F2. Um, well, I will name it. Check box return value. I like, I like really long names for whatever reason. So I've named that checkbox return value, and we're going to use that in a minute here. Um, and so what we're going to do to make these bigger is the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to select B4, and I'm going to click this camera tool, and I'm going to just click over here, and you see that it's made a copy. And I don't really like how it adds a border, but we'll fix that in a second. And I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to make another copy over here. So we're just taking pictures. I'll go to this one over here. And um, look at it again. Again, we're just taking pictures, you know, little, a few little happy snaps. I feel like Bob Ross right now, little happy pictures. So we can line these up however we want. Um, the cool thing about this is that you can actually make them bigger, and we'll see I can make them any size that I want. Okay, so you're saying, great, Jordan, but what do I do next? Because that's only part of the problem, so I still have to go over here if I want to change them, or I can actually type in a number over here. Right? Well, that's actually very interesting that I can type in a number because what we can do is we could um, set up macros for each of these buttons. It's going to change this number right here. So let's think about the easiest way to do this because we really like how when we put these option buttons down, they're already in a series. It's already sort of connected. So we want to make our life as easy as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each of these. And I'm going to rename them. So I'll call this one button one. I'm going to call this one button two. And this is very important how I'm doing this. I'm creating what I would call a series. So this is called button two, and then I'm going to call this one button three. So we have button one, button two, and button three. Now the next thing we need to do is create a way in the code to actually capture which button uh, we're working on. And again, we want to keep the code really small because we want to make sure that we aren't doing so much extra work that we're sort of making this incredibly complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the code, and I already have um, I already have this. Uh, 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 sub that I um, have created, I say right number to response. And so what I want to do is I want to create something uh, that will capture that number as it's coming in um, and write it to that cell that I've defined. So the easiest way to capture the number is to use application.caller. And I'll show you how to do that in one second. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, dim button index because we want to create um, our button index. And now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say button index equals um, application.caller. Now, here's one pr 
problem that we know. We have that word button in there. So if I, application.caller, by the way, when I click something, so let's say I click this application.caller, and I've, I've clicked, let's say, option one, and I've linked right number to response to it, application.caller is going to give me the name of the thing I've just clicked on. So button one, that's what it's going to return. Now, part of that we're not interested in. We're interested in the one, we're not interested in the button. Now, we could use write or something like that to get the suffix, but that actually, you know, one, two, or three, the ending part. But, you know, we assume that this actually could be a series that's greater um, than 10, so we don't really know how many digits there could be. So in that case, what we want to do is we are actually want to get rid of that button word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in replace. Um, now, replace takes in a string. Application.caller is going to return the string of the name of the thing that calls this. So it's going to return button one, button two, button three. So we're going to put that in there as the expression as string. What we wanted to find is button, and we want to replace it with nothing. Now that's going to return us the integer. Now, I don't think that this is necessary, but I always add it in here. So C int means convert or cast to an integer. I don't think that that's necessary. I think it will do it automatically. But I always add that in there because it reminds me uh, what I'm doing, because it's not always intuitively clear uh, what the re that replace is doing. Now that we have that button index, all we really need to do is write it uh, to the screen. So here I have the checkbox return value. I'm going to hit Control-C to copy that. Over here I like using the um, named value shorthand. I'll say dot value equals button index, like I've done right here. Okay, so let's go to our spreadsheet. Let's start linking these. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to right click, click this option button, go to um, assign macro. Uh, do the same thing here, and then do a final one here, and hopefully it works without error. Isn't it? Isn't it great when you? It always works the first time without error. So let's do it. Option button one. Oh, it worked. Option two. Option three. Oh, well, hey, look at that. And you don't even. And you can. I. Sh I shouldn't say you don't even need this. You do need this. You can put it on a part of the screen, however, that you. You know, the user doesn't have to look at. So um, you can kind of put it off view, and that way you can get these option buttons as big as you want. And when I say that, I mean, you know, whatever you want. If you, well, that's a little crazy. <laughs> that's a little too big. There are limits of taste. But yes, this is, this is a way you can solve that problem. And here's the thing, you can do it with checkboxes too. Checkboxes, you do have a little bit more to worry about. Uh, what I like about using it for option buttons is that we can tie it all back to one cell uh, as I've done right here. So once you have the setup done, um, you can work this pretty quickly. This is what I call in dashboards for Excel a reusable component because once you have it working, you can add to it, you modify it. Um, as a component, it's very easy to build in the same way that perhaps laying these option buttons out is easy. It just requires a few extra steps. So that is my tip. So Jordan, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it probably bears repeating, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you, those original option buttons, the actual option buttons, not the pictures, should not be in a hidden column. That's right. right. The picture will disappear. So they have That's to be right. kind of like off. I don't they know, have to be where, where the user except, kind of scroll to or something like that. That's right. They do need to be off screen. So you can um, use the scroll area to to lock it, or you can ask them nicely not to go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> you could put it on another. You know, you could put it on another tab, and I can't remember if um, you put it on another tab and um, you hide that tab. This won't work. I think it actually might, but don't mm -hmm. quote me on that. Okay. Um, I would think so that I would might be another way. Jordan. That that would be my guess is to cut those to another worksheet and then hide the original one. I think yeah. I think that that would work. But yeah, cool. that's that's how you get around it if you want if you want really large option buttons and who who has not wanted those at one point in their life? <laughs> Me, but I would just use shapes and just work around the problem. I I'm a big advocate of shapes as well. No. 